Good evening from New York. With overdue promises to a once enthusiastic base, with the midterm elections just 47 days away, with questions about what the Obama White House still considers worthy of a fight. In our fifth story tonight, the answer. Democrats, with the support of President Obama, will introduce the first step of immigration reform, and two prominent GOP senators, who were once considered the go to Republicans on immigration, not only oppose the measure, but are also incensed that it would be attached to the defense authorization bill, right along with the repeal of. Don't ask, don't tell. Putting immigration reform back in play before the midterms, the president himself speaking last night before the Hispanic Congressional Caucus at its awards dinner. The president invoked the DREAM Act. The bill would provide a path to citizenship for minor children who are in the country illegally if they seek higher education or military service. And while the bill is modest compared to the comprehensive reform the president ultimately seeks, it has been praised by both the Hispanic community and by lawmakers. Last night, the president was quick to note past Republican support for it. And under the pressures of partisanship and election year politics, most of the 11 Republican senators who voted for that reform just four years ago have backed far away from that vote today. Partisan opposition to immigration reform, just a variation of the fear-stoking politics so very popular with fill in the blank. Some take advantage of the economic anxiety that people are feeling to stoke fear of those who look or think or worship differently, to inflame passions between us and them. I have news for those people. It won't work. There is no us and them. In this country, there's only us. And of course, that was reminiscent of the president's remarks on anti-Muslim sentiment in this country. The president's wide-ranging speech included a spirited defense of the Democrats' stand on taxes and health care reform and Wall Street reform. And Mr. Obama acknowledged his own political imperative. You have every right to keep the heat on me and keep the heat on the Democrats. And I hope you do. That's how our political process works. But. Don't forget who is standing with you and who is standing against you. Standing against the DREAM Act, Senator John McCain and Senator John uh, Lindsey Graham, rather, the two saber rattlers vowing to oppose the defense authorization bill if the DREAM Act is attached to it. Senator Graham particularly incensed, quoting, This is an all-time low for me being in the Senate, and that's saying something. The one area that has been kept off limits from partisan politics has been the defense of our nation. Wow, have you been in the nation these last nine years? Senators Graham and McCain had already said they would oppose the defense bill because it, is, it already includes a repeal of don't ask, don't tell. But Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who may move for cloture on the defense bill as early as next week, provides a twofer explanation. Quote, Senator McCain and anyone else who thinks that the DREAM Act is not directly related to our national security should talk to the brave young men and women who want to defend our country but are turned away. Senator McCain should know better than anyone that patriots who step up to serve our grateful nation should be offered a path to citizenship and that anyone who volunteers to serve should be welcomed regardless of their sexual orientation. Today, three Democratic lawmakers who've championed immigration reform met with the president in the White House. We're joined now by one of them, the representative from the Illinois 4th District and a member of the Hispanic Caucus, Luis Gutierrez. Good evening, Congressman. Good evening, Keith. Good to be with good, you tonight. Good to have you here. Describe this afternoon's meeting with the president, if you would, particularly as it, as it <laughs> pertains to this bill being put before Congress. I got to tell you, uh, Keith, I, I've been I've been skeptical and I've been critical of this president in terms of his commitment and vocation and putting the right energy. But today, uh, he, he there was no recriminations in the room. There was no looking back. The president, I, I could see in his face and his eyes and his body language. He's energetic. He's ready to fight and he's ready to do the the, the right fight for young uh, Americans in all but title. I mean, mm -hmm. three, four, five year olds. They got here. We've educated them. They're the class valedictorians. They're bright. They're special young Americans in all but title. Let them join the armed forces. Let them go to college. Let them serve our nation. And the president was clear and unequivocal. And I'm happy he's our president of the United States. Uh, Republican. Republicans uh, have and are going to say that Democrats are the ones playing politics here, that the DREAM Act is being introduced now to boost Hispanic turnout for the midterms, that it shouldn't be attached to the defense authorization bill, as, as uh, Graham and McCain say. Is the, is the, did the president give you an indication he's prepared to fight that battle on those multiple fronts? 
You know what? He seemed very clear. Uh, you've run some excerpts from last night's speech. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't only talk to us about like immigration or you know bilingual education. I mean, he, he gave a, a, a very spirited defense, and he's going on offense, and and he's really speaking to us in in very clear, stark terms, which we're happy uh, that he is, because we think that's that's our leader, that's the one we put at the helm of our nation, not our party, but of our nation, and to. Today, I think he, he said, look, I'm going to use all the power, the influence mm -hmm. of this presidency and put it behind those young men and women, about a million of them. And you know what, Keith? I, I, I was delighted to come out of that meeting, and, and I'm a believer. He's going to do a lot. You spoke of your skepticism last night. He spoke of his uh, of, of others' frustration with him, uh, the Hispanics who had campaigned hard sure. for him. I, I, is he getting into the fight soon enough, or is this is this late to some degree, or is it is it soon enough? Look, I think everybody understands that there has been a wall uh, built by the Republicans, and so look next week. I think it's going to be pretty decisive, and Keith, I'll better be able to answer that question, right? Maybe we'll have a conversation mm -hmm. next Thursday. And let's see, there were 11 Republicans that on more than, that have either co-sponsored the DREAM Act, mm -hmm. 11 currently there, that have either co-sponsored or have voted for cloture to allow the DREAM Act to be voted upon. Look, we don't need one of them to vote for the DREAM Act, not one of them, Keith. Mm -hmm. If they will not obstruct the path, I know there are 51 or better Democrats to get the DREAM Act passed. We want them to be with us. We think it's the right thing to do. But don't obstruct the path. As the president said so eloquently, why do they always have to be the party of no se puede? Mm -hmm. Why can't they be the party of yes, we can, and move our party forward? So look, people want to believe that this president can be a transformational president. They, they look, sure, people get disillusioned. I get angry, I get frustrated. But he elevated my spirits yesterday mm -hmm. at the gala. And I gotta tell you, uh, you know, he wasn't looking backwards today. And, and, and I'm happy we're looking forward. We're gonna have a spirited fight. Harry Reid's ready to do it, we're ready to do it. Think about it. You're telling me that adding up to a million men and women uh, to our military forces at this particular time as a way of service to our nation and guaranteeing not your citizenship but your permanent residency, uh, God, you know, and ultimately become a citizen because, I mean, what's the ultimate tax you pay? The mm -hmm. ultimate tax. Is it really the eight or the nine cent sales tax or the property tax? No. I think it's about your limbs. It's about your life. It's about your blood. It's about your life that you leave on a battlefield. And those kids are ready to do it. Congressman Luis Gutierrez of Illinois, many thanks. Let's talk next week. Thank you. I look forward to it. Kate. All right, me too. Let's turn to the Director of Immigration and National Campaigns for the National Council of La Raza, Clarissa Martinez. Thanks for your time tonight. How are you? Oh, distill this uh, for uh, a moment uh, for me out of the, the right and the wrong and into the pure politics. Is this the energizer the Democrats need for the midterms? I think uh, a vote on DREAM Act, what it does is call a very important question, not only for the American voter in general, for, but for Latino voters. And that is about who is going to vote for progress and who is going to just continue to play politics with the lives of people. This is a bill that it's going to be good for our competitive edge, it's going to be good for our national security. And look, the Department of Defense put the DREAM Act in its strategic plan for 2010. So Senator McCain should take it up with the Department of Defense when he says that it's not related to this bill. And the contours of the fight that that, that suggests, are, are, are McCain and the other Republican senators tr are prepared to block the Defense Authorization Act over this? And on the other side of this, if, if the White House and the Democrats were to back down and punt on the DREAM Act, how damaging would that be? Well, I think that we need to get to the Department of Defense bill first, and then if they have an issue with any of these amendments, they should take that vote and, and make clear where they stand on it. For the Latino electorate, we're going to be looking, again, who is willing to vote for progress and who just wants to keep saying no to everything. I think that the question ought to be called, and I think that they ought to demonstrate if they are going to stand not only against something that is in the interest of our national security, but mm -hmm. also, frankly, in the interest of children. The president told the audience last night, as Congressman Gutierrez mentioned, that they had every right to keep the heat on him and to keep the heat on the Democrats, and he said that's how our political process works. Is that in, in some way an answer to the cynics and to the Republican critics who say, you know, this is time to be part of the election? Uh, because the answer is, of course, it's time to be part of the election, because elections often provide the pressure needed to pass legislation. 
The reality is that there's a lot of people playing politics here. We have seen too many people willing to play politics with the issue of immigration, and it's having an extreme cost, leading to laws like the one in Arizona, which frankly are legitimizing racial profiling mm -hmm. and a, of a whole segment of our population. So if people want to play politics, I think we just ought to call the question, are they for solutions or not? And we are in, are intend to hold feet to the fire of Democrats and Republicans on this issue. To your knowledge, to the degree that you can take soundings on the last 24 hours, how has this resonated within the, the Hispanic community nationwide? Is it, is it seen as kind of the, the second pushback, particularly against SB 1070 in Arizona after the Justice Department? Is it seen as, as, a, as a clear bell so sounding in Washington? The reason why immigration has such an energizing power with the Latino electorate is because it is about respect. Mm -hmm. We have seen the issue of immigration manipulated to discount the contributions that Latinos make to this country every day, and that's why we're saying enough. The DREAM Act is one step in the right direction. Immigration reform, which the majority of Americans support, by the way, is the solution to the problem in the stop to things like 1070. But in the meantime, DREAM is important, and it will show who is willing to start working towards that solution. And it frankly will show if there are Republicans who are going to flip flop on the issue because they supported it in the past. Last point uh, the defense bill also includes, as we mentioned, the repeal of don't ask, don't tell. Is that a complication or is it a win win? How, how does it affect the politics in a way we're not expecting? I think all of these issues are important. As people have said, these are things that are going to help increase the readiness of our military. Each one of them should be taken up on their own merits, and people should not be saying we're not going to get to the bill simply because that may happen. If people believe in their position, they ought to take those votes on each of those issues and own it so that mm -hmm. voters can see if they're willing to play obstructionist on something that is so important to our country. Clarissa Martinez of the National Council of La Raza, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you very much, Keith.